Greetings, 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 my sports to the bone people. Welcome back to another video. Thank you all for checking this one out. I don't know if I have ever been so anxious uh, to see the fifth day of a test match. This first test year of the Ashes is really living up to the talk and the hype. You know, it's pretty entertaining, very entertaining. I don't know how some people are not interested in test cricket anymore. Very, very entertaining um, cricket being played here. Gonna go through the scorecard, let you know how day four went, and also let you know how I see day five going. Also gonna be touching on uh, Yannick Correa. Uh, Jason Hall, I did an interview yesterday after the game, and he mentioned uh, something about Yannick and I didn't remember to talk about it and maybe it's nothing but I think it's pointing us in the direction that he's probably going to be ready for the next game so just give a listening ear until the end as I touch on these two topics and let me know what you think in the comment section alright so right now the ashes at the end of day 4 I would say the momentum has swung a little back in England's favour because you know Stuart Broad was able to remove Marnus Lamachine and Steve Smith in quick succession probably about 30 or so 25 to 30 minutes um, before the close of play so they, they, they had um, Australia on the back foot but Australia they need 174 runs to win and uh, they have 7 wickets in hand so 174 runs to win 7 wickets in hand that is not the worst thing in the world so that's why I'm saying it's not over as yet you know, um, Usman Kawaja is still at the crease looking good and um, Scott Boland is there as the night watchman but we still have the lights of Travis Head, uh, Cameron Green, Alex Carey we know Pat Cummins can, can handle himself with the bat so all of these guys are still left to come so <clears throat> scores in the game so far England they were eventually bowled out for 273 in their second innings and uh, Australia, as we speak, they finished off day 4 and 107 for 3. So they are still trailing by 174 runs. So England, they weren't able to push the total up to 300. You understand? So 107 for 3 uh, means that uh, Australia, Australia need 174, as I said, with, <clears throat> with uh, 7 wickets in hand. So let me just go through the, the, the second innings batting scorecard for England and then we'll take it from there. So Zach Crowley he made seven, uh, Duckett 17, Oli Pope 14, Joe Root was removed on 46, uh, Harry Brook 46 uh, also, Ben Stokes made 43 from 66, uh, Johnny Bearstow got 20, Moen Ali got 19, Oli Robinson he actually played a good knock he made uh, 27, uh, Stuart Broad was left not out and 10, while Anderson uh, made 12. So those were the guys, the, um, that's how the batting went for England in the second innings. Now bowling in that second inning for Australia, the captain Pat Cummins, he took um, four wickets and he was supported by Nathan uh, Lyon who took four wickets also. So uh, Cummins four for 63, Nathan Lyon four for 80 and there was a wicket apiece for Josh Hazelwood and Scott Boland. Cameron Green only bowled two overs and he wasn't able to pick up any wicket. So, you know, that is how it is looking so far. Now, in terms of the batting in the second innings for Australia, as I said, um, you know, they started off um, solid enough. You know, um, David Warner and Usman Kawaja, both of them got off to a brilliant start. Well, Kawaja is still there. Warner was eventually removed by Oli Robinson on 36. So he made 36 of uh, 57 deliveries with four fours. You know, he survived that opening spell from Stuart Broad. And, you know, he was looking to carry on, but he was stopping his tracks by David Warner. Um, was caught behind, you know, he, he was caught behind by the keeper. Marnus Lamachine, he came in. Remember, he made a duck in the, in the first innings. He actually made 13 from 15 before Stuart Broad had him caught behind also. And Steve Smith. He made 6 from 13. Stuart Broad had him caught behind also. Now Steve Smith, I tell my viewers and subscribers, the previous, the ball before he got, before he was dismissed, you know, that ball actually took the edge. 
then it hit the pad so because the ball hit the pad you know it didn't carry through to the keeper so it fell short and the very next delivery um you know Stuart Brad was able to get him driving after one which took the edge and uh Johnny Beerstow took the catch behind so how many catches that so far in the second innings there for Beerstow one two three three catches um so far it's, it's not too bad you know all three batsmen that have been dismissed they have been caught behind by Johnny Beerstow so that is how it is looking my viewers and subscribers um as i said stuart brad took those two wickets and all robinson he took one so those are the uh the, the contributors so far in terms of taking uh wickets in the second innings anderson moen ali and joe root they chipped in with a couple of overs but they haven't picked up any as yet so day five my viewers and subscribers it depends you know um i am looking at a prediction thing here on google and it ha it have them almost even you know, it is saying England 46% to win, Australia 43 and um, draw is 11%. And that's the live probability, you know. So as the game go on, things will, will, will shift. You know, as I said, if Kawaja is able to bat deep in the, into this innings, then I, I foresee them winning the game. Um, if there is no rain tomorrow and they bat till the close of play, they will score 174 runs. Worse if Travis Head gets in there and is out the, and, he, and is at the crease. So that is how the, the Ashes is looking, my viewers and subscribers. All right, before we finish up, um, a little bit of information here. I didn't remember to touch on this in the interview that I spoke about yesterday. Now, Jason Hola, when he was asked about the team and, you know, the fitness, he basically said that the guys are, are, are all in good shape and ready to go apart from a few niggles that they are always playing with now as it relates to Yannick Correa what he said was this you know he should be good to go in a couple of days time that is what he said Yannick Correa should be good to go in a couple of days time I am aware that Jason Ola is not a doctor and um, he gave his interview right after the game so assessment would have had to be done so and Jason Ola probably wouldn't have heard the result yet but um, probably just looking at it and, and getting information from the first aid people, um, they probably say, listen, we don't play again until Thursday. He should be good to go. Um, so a couple of days time probably means that by Thursday, they will have him patched up. If it's a mask or whatever he needs to play in, he would be good to go. Oh, and, and thing. This is not me confirming that he's going to be playing. I just didn't remember to mention this part because I know a lot of people are actually looking forward to seeing him in the team based on the bowling form that he is in and things so you know jason hola saying that um he should be good to go in a couple of days time probably means by thursday it can totally mean the following game after thursday's game i just wanted to put that out there because we haven't gotten any any update from um cwi as yet so i just wanted to put that out there that is basically it in my viewers and subscribers gonna leave it right here for now and we'll touch base again later on big up on yourself